In the second part of our overview, we are going to use the malaria use case to discuss how we can review various processes and tools to help us develop our use case requirements. We are also going to quickly discuss how this process can lead to further enhancements not previously considered or possible. When considering how DHIS2 can fit in with the workflow process, it is useful to start with the outputs that are required. In the case of a malaria program, these include number and incidence rate of cases and various quality and performance metrics. Understanding these dimensions helps define the minimum data collection requirements needed to produce program outputs and can lead to a discussion on how this may be presented in DHIS2, for example, through charts or visualizations. We see here a bar chart as an example visualization displaying malaria case incidents by district as well as a number of other indicators this program might require to be calculated. You would want to understand these examples and try to allow for DHIS2 to create these outputs for the program you are working with. These choices should also be informed by factors such as how often these program outputs are reviewed according to the program workflow, monthly, quarterly, etc., and at which levels of the organization the data should be available for review, such as district, province, and national levels. If we refer back to our diagram, we can see that these processes are made more clear to us after working with our stakeholders and reviewing any relevant documentation they may have provided to us. Data are reviewed monthly, quarterly, six-monthly, and annually at various levels. We would also want to consider these regular work practices when reviewing the workflow. By reviewing the indicators and outputs that need to be created routinely in a malaria program, we can better understand how the variables on the data collection tools contribute to the required outputs, and therefore identify the minimum data inputs required to make the use case work in DHIS2. For example, if we take one of the indicators available within our documentation, incidence rate of malaria cases by species, we can clearly see that there is a malaria species type field on the data collection tool, which contributes to the calculation of this indicator. Reviewing data collection processes is more than simply reviewing what data are being captured. We are also trying to understand what devices may be used to collect these data, the frequency of entering data, and what level or levels the data will be collected. For example, in this malaria program, a paper form is filled out at the facility with data on age, gender, condition of patient, confirmation method, medicine given, and malaria species type. We see this on the line list shown. By reviewing the process diagram below the line list, we can see that this form is sent to the district level every month from each facility. The district receives the data, verifies positive cases, and enters these into DHIS2 using a laptop. At this point, the data can be reviewed in DHIS2 to verify that all of the required source data have been captured and the program outputs can be produced. The process of understanding the workflow should be a collaborative process, as there are many inputs the team working on the program can provide. 
This can be facilitated through meetings between subject matter experts from the specific program, such as health experts working on malaria, and DHIS2 system experts. This can clearly define processes that are associated with the use case as it is, as well as identify new areas in the workflow that DHIS2 can contribute to. Remember that at the beginning of this presentation, we said that use cases are used to define how we take field-level requests and incorporate the requested functionality into DHIS2. It is very important to collaborate closely with those who have experience working through the program's practical challenges. Otherwise, you risk designing a DHIS2 program that will not work in practice. In addition to ensuring that your program supports existing processes, it's a good idea to consider how DHIS2 can support new processes and outputs thanks to the additional functionalities or features that the system provides. As an example, before introducing DHIS2, it may have been difficult to plot case location data on a map. This may not previously have been considered as part of the malaria program, or it was considered and was deemed not practically possible, so these data were not used to generate any kind of program outputs. Introducing DHIS2 makes it easy to produce maps of this kind, meaning that this feature could now be implemented as part of this use case to help stakeholders visualize the geographic distribution of malaria cases. Such potential enhancements should be identified and reviewed to see what is possible and how they can benefit the program that you are implementing. At this point, hopefully you are a little more familiar with the malaria use case that will be used throughout this course, as well as some of the steps used to define this use case. In the last part of this overview, we will discuss another use case used in this course, the SARA survey. <laughs>